Hi, my name is Craig Frazier and I'm here at the Createx Colors facility in Connecticut. And what we're going to do today is something that a lot of people have been asking me about. I usually always get either cosplayers or people that uh, work in the movie industry or make maquettes and small game playing, uh, you know, little, little figurines. And they always want to know what kind of paint is best for it. And I always tell them, well, there's a lot of systems in Createx that will work great for it. And uh, this is a perfect example. What we're going to do today in this video is show start to finish uh, working on an actual cosplay helmet. In this situation, this is a Boba Fett helmet. You might recognize the Mandalorian shape, and this is, in my opinion, the OG Mandalorian, which is Boba Fett. And we got all the accessories here um, for him, and we actually even have another accessory that doesn't belong to him. This is an R2-D2 uh, little video camera. I think it goes on top of, the, of, of his dome. We're going to be working on that in another project, but I want to show you. Uh, it's made from the same material, and I want to show you how we're going to make this look like it's metallic. So. We're doing an authentic reproduction of the Boba Fett helmet down to, it doesn't have the dent in here like you see some helmets have. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna paint all of the paint chips, show the silver rub through, show the texture, and we're gonna show you how to make texture, how to get the colors to lay on here, what to put on the surface, how to prep the surface, pretty much anything you need to know on painting this. The only thing we're probably not gonna do is, uh, is put in the actual visor, which uh, like an idiot, I left back in California. So, uh, but we're gonna get this all painted up and matte cleared and finished in this one video. I go, now, beforehand, this is the way we get stuff, right, you know, from the company. This is an N NME props helmet. There's a number of companies out there, Anovos, I can't remember all the names, but all of them make excellent versions of different types of Star Wars or cosplay helmets. This helmet itself uh, is a cast resin, or actually it's a urethane uh, helmet, and it's got a colored urethane, very nice quality casting. There was very few flashing or anything we had to work on. We had to cut and file a few things on it, but overall, we just went over the whole thing with some 220 and it's ready to paint. Luckily, this is not a flawless helmet. If you've ever seen Boba Fett's helmet, it's pretty chewed up and thrashed. So we're gonna, I don't really worry about fixing it up that much. We did a little bit of body working, not much. We had a little bit of inclusion right here I wanted to fix, a little bit of Evercoat. If you're wondering what we used, we just used a simple Evercoat body filler, very similar to Bondo, two-part two polyester filler. Put it on there, sand it, it's good to go. Now, um, a lot of people come in and put on a polyester primer on top of this, or what we call a, uh, a DTS, or you know, a direct to surface primer. Uh, we don't really need to do that with this, uh, as far as a polyester primer, because it doesn't need any more sanding. It's actually in good shape. But what we are gonna put on it is, we are gonna put an adhesion promoter sealer on it to make sure we lock everything down, and it gives us a good surface we can mask on and paint on without any lifting. And uh, what's the best thing to work on, not just resin, but urethane, acrylic, polyester, um, you, you name it, aluminum, fiberglass, some of the best stuff I've ever uh, used is the new Createx, not just Autoborn sealers, but also the new UVLS system. We can either use, in this case, the Transparent 6000. The reason I'm using Transparent, I have no need to put any more white pigment on this. It's already white. The next colors we're going to put on top, we're using this white as the base. So I want to use a transparent sealer. Createx is unique from its competitors in the fact that they make, not just in the auto-born, uh, automotive grade sealer line, or the UVLS line, absolute transparent uh, sealers. Now the UVLS clear, the UVLS resin, is not just transparent, it comes in three different types. There's a 4050, 4051, and 4052 UVLS. That means the 4050 is a gloss, 4051 is a satin, 4052 is a matte. Now we're going to be using the 4050 as a preliminary and I'll tell you why. The gloss has the best adhesion properties of anyone. I also love mixing it as a balancing clear. We're going to be using, color-wise on this helmet, we're actually going to be using the illustration line, which people say, well, that's just for illustrating. That's just for art, fine art, or small design. That's not for automotive grade or quality. I'll tell you something. All the pigments in Createx are the same grade, the same automotive grade and quality. And the difference with the illustration line is the pigments are they're ground very fine, but they also have a submicron shear on the acrylic resin, which makes that stuff spray very, very fine. And that's perfect. What I do is I take that illustration, I mix it in with the UVLS as a balancing clear, and that becomes our paint. Then the last thing we put on top of this is going to be the 4052, which is actually the, the matte finish uh, from the UVLS system. So we're going to be sandwiching UVLS with UVLS with UVLS. The most durable system you could ever do because it just has a commonality of all the same resin. And the only re reducer we're going to be using is the standard 4011. We're going to mix in. Now, 
Before I start spraying, uh, we sanded all this. I think I already told you with 2020, you know, 2020, it was clean enough to do that. It's already white. Now you could, they may say, yeah, but should I put some white here? If this was gonna remain white, yes. Anyone that knows this, this is a black piece on Boba Fett's helmet. So I'm not really worried about that coming through on black. And uh, so we're gonna turn around and mix up some UVLS 4050 and, uh, and add about 10% 4011. Now when you stir it and mix it up, let it sit for a minimum 15 minutes. This is important whether you're spraying a car, whether you're spraying a wall mural, or whether you're airbrushing with a micron of something this big. Doesn't make any difference. That 15 minutes is an important factor in the paint, stabilizing and emulsifying, kind of getting together. You know, the reducer, the binder, and the paint all kind of work together. It is a different animal, trust me. Your details will look better, your gradation and your atomizing will be better, adhesion, everything is better. It's only 15 minutes. Go and do something and then let it, you know, come back, give it one more stir, put it back in again. So we've already mixed some up, letting it sit right now. We're going to come back and put my mask on, load up my gun, and I'm just going to do a nice even coat on this. And then the key thing is we're going to let it sit overnight. Now the reason we let it sit overnight is we're going to be doing some masking on it tomorrow. What if I wanted to work on it some more today? See, we're already working at night here, so tomorrow we're going to come and finish it. Okay, let it sit at least an hour before working on it. But in this situation, I'm not really throwing a lot of clear on it. It's a, it's a probably a minimum coat. We just want it for adhesion right now. So let me go get my mask and we'll get to spraying. Okay, if you remember, I had just got finished shooting my Boba Fett helmet as well as the, um, the components with the 4050 sealer. And you want to leave that before doing any masking or painting on it at least about an hour. We did it optimal. We worked on it last night, so we had it set all night long, and that worked great. It, so it was good and hardened up. In fact, I even came in and used a little bit of a, a used red scotch spray just to go over and just knock it back a bit, and then of course wiped it down again. And uh, it's time to, to add some paint. Now the commonality we have with this paint and our sealer is I'm using the 4050 UVLS clear also for the balancing clear. Now the colors I used here are, uh, are all illustration except for one. Um, I used vile green, which is part of the Tim Gore line. I've got the opaque white, which I used to, of course, lighten it up a little bit. I used Tim Gore's code blue right here, which is a great greenish blue, but it has a little bit of a sickish look to it, as Tim Gore. And, uh, and then, of course, to tint it back, I used some candy black, which is part of the Candy 2.0 system. This is a highly transparent dye, whereas the rest of these are, uh, are pigmented paints. Uh, mixing those together, I went ahead and matched a picture I had online. Now, there are a lot of Boba Fett helmets online. Uh, I chose to pick one that, uh, from previous experience and working uh, with different companies with uh, Lucasfilm, it's a Lucasfilm approved color. I, please do not write in and tell me I got the color wrong. If I did, I did, and so did everyone else out there. There's a lot of different interpretations. Mine's based on episode five and the Boba Fett, you know, pretty much the, premier, uh, the debut of them. Is it exactly two specs? I wasn't privy to the original helmet colors, but got pretty dang close, I think. And we're gonna do so much different effects and techniques on it, I'm not really worried about being that close to it. All those colors I mixed ahead of time, and then as soon as I was finished, I went with the same four to one mixture uh, that I've used in the past where, in some cases I go one to one, but in this situation, I wanted mostly to, there to be uh, color, so three parts color, one part of the UVLS 4050, about maybe 10%, maybe 15% uh, percent of the 4011, mix it up, and very, very important, let it sit for 15 minutes. Um, basically stirred it up in one of these cups, strain it, you always want to strain it, and then uh, add it to the PPS cup on our LPS, uh, or, sorry, LPS, LPH 80 by Iwata, and this is the, the one with the, um, I believe it's the 1.2 nozzle, I'm not, I, I'm not sure exactly off the top of my head. Uh, one, two. One, two? Yeah, it's one, two. Um, so anyway, gonna go ahead and uh, turn the booth on, throw my mask on, and on this, the way we're painting this, we're doing it in a sequence. 
And I, I could go ahead and paint the entire helmet this color. This color is not. Now, if you want to know the colors I've mixed on this helmet, there's three primary colors. Uh, people sometimes think, oh, there's green, and then there's black, and then there's red. Well, there is black, but the color that's in here, this color right here, is actually a darker green, closer to the vile green's original color. This color here and here, and this color is the same. This color you see in this area, and the color back here, is actually the same. Then there's the red, which is this, the trim back here, the, the great insert back there, and of course coming forward this part is all the red. What I'm going to do is I'm using the lightest color, which is this green, which has a lot of white in it, and that's going to be the color. I'm going to come in and just spray it. I'm going to get overspray on these areas. I'm not worried about it. I want to mask as little as possible. So the first color I do, I, I'll just get overspray all over the place because I want coverage here and I want coverage here. I care less about the rest of the area. Then we're going to come in and back mask that, back mask that, hit this area with the dark green, dark green, then we're going to back mask that and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to hit it with the red. The reason we're doing this is the red covers very, very well and it kind of dominates the green. And secondly, there is so much damage and uh, silver and black and scratches and whatever in the red. Eh, eh, eh. You're not gonna see any of the overspray, don't worry about it. So just wanna give you an idea that even at this level, there is a strategy. Always have a game plan. And, uh, and then if something goes wrong, get ready to call audibles. You know what I'm talking about. So uh, we're ready. I got this all nice and wiped down uh, using the water-based uh, PPG pre-cleaner. And uh, it's dried, wiped, we're ready, so I'm going to put my mask on, turn the booth on, we're going to start painting. blowing a little air right now. Okay, after giving about an hour for this to cure, and you don't want to tape on anything less than an hour, uh, and that goes for solvent as well as water-based. If you can go a little bit longer, that's cool, but this paint dries really, really nice, really, really smooth, and it locks in good enough, you can tape on it. I'm also taking a little extra precaution. I'm gonna be taping using some of the FBS uh, La Rouge tape, which is a very, very minor tack. It's their red vinyl tape. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be masking off this area and just these two areas, because I'm gonna come in and spray the dark green on the back and in this area right in here. I'm not concerned about overspraying on the red area because that's the last one which will be back mass and then the red will be sprayed. So uh, I already checked and you know felt it, did a little tape test in inconspicuous area, they always tell you to. No lifting, no issues, we're ready to go. And just gonna take this tape and very carefully line it up and just kind of walk it around the perimeter of this top part of the helmet. Now this tape sticks by pressure, it's pressure sensitive, so you press down on it, the glue will stick a little bit better than if, if not, but also if you stretch it, it makes it less adhesive. So be really careful not to stretch this tape too much, otherwise the tape won't have any adhesion. Some people don't even realize how much they're stretching the tape when they're pulling it. I'm being very cautious to not hold the tape. I'm gonna let it so it can unwind on its own accord and it'll unwind before it stretches. And I'm gonna snap it over here. I don't wanna snap it on the surface because then it'll pull the tape right there and I don't want that part to actually be affected. 
line it up with the next one and then I don't care if it goes into there because I'm going to come in with some uh, three quarter inch I don't have it right here but I'm going to use some of the yellow tape three quarter inch yellow and then paper that one area so that area is going to be masked then I come in and the reason I'm using this tape is it bends so nicely around corners I can come in and it's kind of a tight bend here normally I might want to use like an eighth inch but this will be fine and I'm masking right to the edge that I want the dark green, which is going here, to be at. Not where I was a little button. I'm gonna hand paint this guy silver later because that's what color he is. He's some like little, I don't know what the heck it is. All the little things you see attached to Star Wars helmets and guns, there's a cosplay, actually it's not cosplay, it's actually a studio term for it. They're called greebles. So little weird stuff, gears, little goodies, that's a, that's a greeble right there. We have no idea what it is, it probably is a, Probably, honestly, looking at it, it looks just like a coat button. I was just glued on. It's got four little holes in it, just like a button does. And do the same thing on this. It's kind of hard to see where that line is because it's so matte. It's another nice thing about this illustration paint. It lies so flat. And even though this is a gloss, 4050 that we added to it, the, the, the illustration paint itself is enough of a matte, it just kind of killed that gloss, it left it kind of a satiny look. There you go. Stretch it there. Back in there, press it down where I like it. And then I will back mask that, and the next step will be us coming in and actually spraying that dark green color, which I already have mixed right in here. Uh, the mixture we used in this was a combination of Illustration Decay, Vile Green, that both these colors are from the Tim Gore line, as well as Code Blue and a little bit of white. But mostly in this one, it's Vile Green and, and uh, Decay. A little bit of Candy Black also, just to kind of darken it up. I want this to appear almost dark at night, but then when the light's hitting it, it's got to have like a real foresty, deep, dark green. And that's the color that's going to go here and going to go on the back of the helmet. this overnight to dry uh, because we could we got other videos we're doing here so it was easy if you don't have overnight give it an hour and you'll be fine and uh, you notice how it came out really nice and smooth now there's some areas like oh you missed a spot there no I didn't I don't care about that spot it's gonna be the next color that's what I care about there and that's what I care about there Ooh, smooth when you're spraying this um, the illustration I mean literally light tack coat and then one second coat was coverage illustration covers amazingly and, uh, and when you sp first spray it on there if you see a little bit of orange peel don't freak out it means you got a little bit heavy on the material wait for it to dry just get some air don't use heat air air motion and uh, and obviously just whew, levels out really nicely same with the autoborne sealers same with the UVLS's same with a lot of the Kratex products a lot of waterborns in general but Kratex products really flow out nicely um, but don't don't keep on honking on the material you can get runs like anything uh, this right here is nice and dry and what we're gonna do now is uh, we have kept this area masked off which is our lighter green the dark green I'm gonna mask that off now leaving this which are red and those are gonna be the only uh, things we're gonna use a full-size gun on uh, until the end when we you know, put a clear coat on it um, Everything else I'm probably just going to be airbrushing, using the airbrush because it's a smaller volume. And uh, if you get some screw-ups on this, another thing, I, I usually don't tell this to people. They'll say, ah, oh, don't worry about it, make a mistake. Have you seen Boba Fett's helmet? I mean, he takes about as much care of his helmet as like a five-year-old kid with his batting helmet at a Little League game. I mean, it's like, that thing's trash. So if you get some issues on there, guess what? Little, uh, little blaster damage and you're, and you're good to go. Now, I'm still gonna be careful on masking on it because I don't need any heavy tape. I'm not gonna come in and use Gorilla Tape on this just to prove a point. So I'm using my La Rouge tape from FBS and I'm gonna come in and I wanna tape as close to that edge as possible. Now bring this all the way up. Now, this one, I'm gonna bring up and snap it there. I went beyond the edge and I'll tell you why. I'm going to come along this direction now 
And I'm trying to follow that edge as close as possible. But again, it's not that big. I, I don't think Bobo really was working hard at his masking when he painted his helmet. Yeah. There we go. And I'm going to come in and lightly, I'm not even really cutting, I'm holding the blade here and pulling the tape against the blade. I will use the blade here, but very, very carefully just to score this tape to give me that clean edge right there. Then what I'll do is I'll come in with my masking tape. There you go, cut that first a little bit to make it clean. And just back mask right in there like that. Not pressing down real hard, why? Because this tape is pressure sensitive. The more you press down, the more it sticks. We don't need that. And curve around here, I made that a little bit short, but I was tearing another piece off, not the end of the world. And just keep on. This doesn't need paper, this is such a small little area. I'll just, we call this the rip and tear technique. Make sure you get good overlaps everywhere. Make sure you don't burnish it down, but make sure you get all those little tunnels, those little areas. Otherwise, you can get paint bleed. And not even the liquid bleed, because you can spray dry and it can, you can still create a little tunnel or a little venturi where you mask in a whole area off and you spray something here and the paint travels and deposits somewhere else. That's, that's, always, that's always fun. <clears throat> that's it. That part right there is masked. Um, am I worried about inside of here? No. I'm going to come in and do this black later on, but I'll do that freehand. This is all going to go red. So what i got to do next is I've got to mask off this side like I did here. And then back here, I'm going to mask off this section. This stays red around here, and then this back area has black inside of there. Probably going to come in and do that by hand. Uh, it would be a nightmare to mask that off. I'll just use a little brush and go, no big deal. Plus, there's little chunks and damage back that you'll never see. So this is all red, this is red, this is staying green, this is staying green. And uh, so that'll be do it. I don't think you want to watch me mask the entire time. So we're going to come back and just like a Food Network special, everyone's going to be masked and finished and the casserole will be ready out of the oven. So I'll see you back in a little bit. Got all my masking done, went around and made sure, checked all the edges, even some of the areas of the area that was taped before. Make sure I don't want any bleed throughs on this. And, uh, and then I, I had my color already mixed up before, but just to let you know what I made the color out of this time, it, of course, got my good old faithful 4050 uh, LVS clear. And then I use a combination of Tim Gore's uh, coagulated crimson and blood red, as well as some decay. And then to darken it up a little bit, threw in some of my favorite candy black. All that mixed together, and then a little bit of 411 reducer, good to go, and put it in our PPS cup system, uh, let it sit for 15 minutes before I spray it, and then we got our uh, LPH80 with the 1.2 nozzle on here. I think it's the E4, uh, E4 nozzle. Make sure you get that E4 nozzle, that's the bad boy. Uh, works great with waterborne. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put my mask on, turn the booth on, and spray this sucker. Got the helmet all unmasked. You see how nice it looks? Basically a nice, clean, crisp blade. You can see the colors look quite a bit different with all that tape off of there. And uh, as it is, it's almost like kind of day glowy bright because we don't have all the thrashed stuff going on. But the uh, world is not perfect in, uh, in Boba Fett land because guess what? <laughs> yes! Yeah, we had some lifting. And why? Well, on the inside edge here because, hey, you know, sometimes you kind of miss an area that's prepped. Right here, this is a piece of tape that I probably rubbed in a little bit too hard. And uh, why would you lift? Why would you get lifting? Well, there's a couple of reasons you get lifting. Uh, we know that this paint sticks very well because I had masking all over this and the only thing I lost, this was actually a nick because I bumped in it with my airbrush. 
This was an area right here that probably didn't get a lot of prep. And this could be anywhere, anything from, don't forget these molds are, this is rotocast. By the way, if you're wondering what this was, remember I made a comment about being urethane? It's stuff called Silpac and uh, it's actually rotocast resin. So uh, there could be a mold release. You put mold release in the, in the molds to pop these things out. If any of that's left on there, it gets inside the, the urethane. It can cause lifting because that's the whole design for it. What do we do about that? I've got so much stuff going on this, I'm not really that worried, but let's say this isn't a crucial area and you were really worried about it. So I'm gonna take a little piece of tape right here. I'm gonna dull it on my shirt. I've got cats at home, so it works out really good to dull tape because I'm usually constantly covered in cat hair. And I'm gonna put that right across the top there, kind of fold it in. Then I can come in and I've got this color in my airbrush. Use the classic hand masking technique. Blow it until it's dry. All of a sudden, you're like, "Wait a second! It's oh my gosh! It's it's all better." What this little nick right here? You can barely see him. That little nick. Now this guy gets extra special treatment. Hand mask and blend it out. Oh, it's remarkable, it's all gone, it's all fixed. That, that's how simple these little repairs can be. And I'll do the exact same thing. See this one actually, I have uh, silver and some messed up areas to hide this. This actually right here, if I'm gonna follow the, the, the screwed up scratches on the original helmet, there's a bunch of it here from his helmet hitting his backpack, but there's none here. So this one right here, I do need to actually touch up. So I'm gonna put a piece of tape on that the same exact way. Probably could use the other one, which already was dulled nicely. Now why am I, if I'm so cocky and confident about my paint sticking, why do I need to dull the tape? Because I'm not tempting to lift gods. Evidently, there's something going on right there. So I'm gonna be careful. Come at the same green, aim down so overspray doesn't go up. Don't spray like that because you get overspray. Aim down, overspray goes in the direction you're painting. And blend it down. There you go. A little air, let it dry. And always carefully remove the tape. And there you go, an instant repair. So uh, no, I did not mean to do that, but I never really need, need to do that on purpose because I've never had a taping incident where there wasn't something like that, some little goof off. It just happens, you know. So uh, we used to always make a joke saying, uh, good custom painters uh, fix things and the clients never know. Great custom painters make mistakes and charge more. So, you know, I, I just fix them and let them know I'm never gonna soon be that, that great. But uh, we're all ready on this guy. He's uh, ready to start getting some erosion, some thrashness, what I call the fun part, the sit down part of this jo uh, job. Uh, but we also have a bunch of his uh, greebles, his, his uh, heads up viewer and some stuff on the sides and some stuff on the sides over here and that little dude right there. These things have to go silver and I'm gonna do that separately right here on the counter. So we'll let him dry and uh, think about it for a while and then we'll start working on the small parts and then we'll start bringing it together and start doing all the texturing.